I chose uh, as my article, this exhibition was brought to you by Guns and Big Oil by Gavin Grinson. He explains how a lot of uh, companies use museums and like art museums and such to sort of gain influence in political spaces. They, um, what was it? They, you know, they sponsor a lot of exhibitions and through those exhibitions they can sort of get in contact with all of the political figures. For instance, uh, we have a few examples. Um, Sackler protest at the Guggenheim was about um, Sackler family who were uh, pharmaceutical, who run a pharmaceutical, large pharmaceutical company, um, and they were responsible basically for the opioid crisis. And same with, again, with BP, the oil company at the British Museum. Um, a lot of people are not fans of these companies, so they go and they protest the uh, exhibition. Um, so they use these, these activism as a way to fight for good. But not all, uh, not all protest is used for positive change. There's also negative change. For instance, with the works of Barnett Newman. So Barnett Newman was a abstract, abstract expressionism, modern art, color field artist. He did a lot of paintings and sculptures. He was Jewish. So three of his paintings were attacked in the years, sort of a few decades following his death, in, uh, I believe, 1977, uh, starting with Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue, four. Um, or so they set before in uh, 1982. It was at the uh, National Gallery in Berlin, and a German student went and just attacked it, basically. Took a, I believe it was a, like a, one of those poles they put out to fence out things, and they just smashed it into it. Uh, damaging it. Um, at the time, he didn't claim that it was political, pol politically motivated, per se. He said that it was, the artwork was a perversion of the German flag and that they shouldn't, the government shouldn't spend money on art because artists earn too much money. Um, but you also need to take into account uh, that Barnett Newman was Jewish, and it's, yeah. Um, then, in 1986, Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue 3 was also attacked in the Sedlewijk uh, Museum in Amsterdam. Um, this time, he, the uh, attacker attacked it with a box cutter, cutting large gashes in it. I don't believe I have the picture of the attack version on here, but it, um, I don't believe he. What was it? He um he. After the fact, he showed no remorse. He said, I "Don't quite remember what, but again, it was." Should check. Um, but after this one was attacked, there was quite a few years. No one. Everyone is too scared to try and repair it because. The, even though it looks like a basic three-color painting, the specific details and how each color was painted out was very intricate and it's very hard to replicate. And it wasn't until the, the 90s when someone tried to fix it. And instead of doing proper job, they just painted over the entire thing with just basic red paint. And apparently, this guy who attacked it the first time was mad at that. I don't know why. And he then came back to the museum and attacked a third painting. He had planned to go for Red, Yellow, and Blue 3 a second time, um, but it wasn't up yet because I think they were still worried about it. Uh, so instead he went and turned to the next painting that he could find, Cathedra, um, in 
Um, yeah. Beam. What was your conclusion <coughs> into all of this? Uh, people use protests to put their message out into the world, and they use they often use arts to as a means for that protest. Do you know what Newman uh, intended for the viewer to experience through his technique? No. Um, I'm just reminding of reminded of Rothko and how Rothko is expressed. You know what he wants the viewer to experience when he's he's like looking at one of his large canvases, his color field canvases, and the sort of you know emotional or spiritual communion that he wanted. I, I was just wondering if there's anything that you men might have said about you know his use of color and line and contrast and how that was supposed to affect his viewer. Yeah, I wonder if it was similar to Rothko, because, you know, they were contemporaries, but, yeah, perhaps. Something to look into. But thank you very much, Eli. Very interesting. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you.